LS is a little sickness, or LS, aka Little Sickness, is a caster that will not be appearing on Hotline League. And it is Hotline League episode 195. What you just heard from Mark Zimmerman is the truth. Unfortunately, LS, who was supposed to be on this week's show, uh, we hope he feels better because about 15 hours ago he tweeted that he was uh, he had fever. He wasn't feeling well after a second shot of the vaccine, uh, and we haven't heard from him yet. So it's Hotline League time. Mark and Travis edition, where we talk about the roster rumor. There's actually a shit ton of stuff to talk about this week. The least of all is Worlds, by the way. This is the way it always goes. North America gets knocked out at groups just Busters out or quarters just in time for us to just completely overshadow what's happening in semis and finals by... Well, it's... Yeah. It's especially appropriate this week because it's like, hey, you guys have any predictions for finals? Dom won 3-0? Okay, sounds good. Yeah. Tonight I am pairing, I am pairing my game fuel, my Mountain Dew game fuel sherbet flavor, with a uh, night owl pumpkin beer left over from a event that Mark and I hosted last night. That was very that had was very surprising. In fact, tonight's hotline league situation is uh, right is is on brand. It's continuing a situation we had about ten or or twelve people that we were trying to do for like a, not a party but like a small gathering. Literally hours before the start, like within an hour or two from the start of our event, six of those people canceled. Uh, in fact, I heard from Ender, Mark, finally today. He, oh, messaged, yeah. he messaged me and he said, uh, where did he say? He said he was streaming last night. He was streaming a bunch of caster stuff. He said, sorry, I missed the thing last night. I wasn't feeling up to it. Uh, and that was the only thing I got uh, from him. So, I mean, he, we, he, he just referenced something else, but, uh, everybody canceled on us and that feels bad. At least he, he kind of said something, I guess. Um, we played one night werewolf Christabel, who's in chat had probably the sickest move in that game I've ever seen. Yeah. Legitimately. We went home and Ashley and I were talking about it for like 10 more minutes. Yeah. <laughs> it was very, very confusing at first. Um, but we have a lot of extra well, it alcohol. Was, it was. It was funny too because Kelby, after we stopped playing, like on, as we were leaving, I heard Kelby be like, "Wait, so how would you know to do that?" Yeah, he still, <laughs> he was still funny. trying to piece it out together um, as you were walking out the door. Uh, yeah. uh, we have a bunch of extra drinks and food and stuff like that at the house that, uh, or the apartment that Mark and I will be consuming over the course of this week. Uh, I should also mention this episode. I'll... Oh, go ahead. No, Mark, you were interrupting me. No. You had something to say. No. You, okay. No. This episode brought to you by Alienware. Yeah, I was going to say that. I think. Uh, I just feel like if there's any type you're going to interrupt me. Probably do. Doing it during the sponsor shout outs is the, the worst time. Mark. Um, food and. People are going to be listening to the audio of this and think that the recording that is like messed up, up or something. <laughs> Oh fuck! Are you having a good time? Uh, I want to. I want to listen back to that and see how how well I was able to keep up with you. <laughs> Great, glad, excited, can't wait. Um. Anyway, shout out to Alienware and Gamefield for sponsoring the show. We love them, even if Mark decides it's hilarious to cover the sponsor shout outs and turn off his webcam. There we go. He's back. Hello. What are you doing? What? Oh. I didn't do that. Okay. That, okay. So that's, I'm not doing that. That is my computer freaking out. I'm using my newer computer, actually. Normally, I have my rig just set up from my, my old la uh, laptop. Yeah. So this is my first time actually doing the show off this one. So if there's any hiccups, let me know. Yeah. We'll figure it out. Anyway, Weird. there's a lot to talk about, as I was saying. Uh, so I think the last time that we did the show, uh, there was like basically nothing out there. I, I think I had streamed my predictions video earlier in the day. Uh, maybe I hadn't even. Maybe it was like Tuesday I streamed the predictions video. It came out on Wednesday. I forget. Whatever. Anyway, since then, Perks and Alfari now supposedly going to Vitality as reported by Esports Maniacos. Uh, Riot has increased the LOL Esports contract length for two f four, to four years, which is hilarious given literally the thing I said right before this. Um... <laughs> Wait, what did you say before this? That that Perks and Alfari are both going to Vitality. Oh. <laughs> Which is funny because they both signed, I believe, three-year contracts and uh, are leaving after one year. 
apparent supposedly of their own accord. Um, just kind of stands in stark contrast. Uh, 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 arc, all this arc, I am down to kind of take one or two calls about the arcane stuff. Mark, have you seen how I've many collabs? The yeah, they're doing so. Oh, oh I, yeah. Not even the trailers. I'm just talking about like, like this is like Fortnite levels of collaboration. They've they have like spe special right. Um, Reddit arcane themed stuff. They've got they're doing a collab with Fortnite. They're doing like I was gonna say, yeah. Uh Imagine Dragon stuff. The opening ceremony is supposed to be all about arcane. Which like I don't know how I feel about because I'm like, is that overshadowing the the finals then? Um I don't know. There's a ton they're doing a ton of stuff. It's actually kinda crazy. So um yeah, that's a thing. Um we also obviously have uh the finals are now Something we can talk about. We can talk about this past weekend's semifinals and how, unfortunately, they're going to keep the format the same way, I'm guessing, because they can be like, well, the semis were great. Then the finals might suck. Who knows? Um, oh, yeah, PUBG Mobile. They're doing something with PUBG as well. Uh, mm -hmm. There's all sorts of stuff. I mean, other other rumors that have occurred. Uh, I, we should, by the way, we were talking about this a little bit beforehand. From From everything I have heard... The you know the Bjergsen TL stuff is made, is not is not done yet. That's what people keep saying is that like he's probably deciding between C9 and and TL. Uh, and I don't know Jack's in the chat, so he's probably curious to see what what I was going to say about all this but uh, stuff. But it's not it's not a done deal yet. So we can take calls about that. Maybe some C9 fans think he should go to C9 instead of TL. Maybe some TL fans think maybe somebody thinks he should go to one of the other places. I don't know. Uh, 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 there's tons of different stuff. So, Mark, am I forgetting anything big? I mean, there's just so much. Uh, no, I think you got all of it. The contract one was particularly interesting to me because, as we all know, um, contracts are absolutely binding, and there's no way players ever get out of them early. So, the increase, um, it's true. to four years is really Mark. Important. That sounds like a just like a willful misunderstanding of the of how of contracts, how contracts work. work. Yeah, I, I just willfully don't understand that once it says in the global contract database the end date, the players are totally locked into that contract until it's over. And it, anything and any other suggestion is a misrepresentation of how contracts work. It, anyway, um, uh, I I think there's been more and more info, or more and more suggestions that Whippo might end up on TL, so that's also a conversation. Maybe people want to because now that it seems pretty clear that Alfari and Perks are leaving their respective teams, uh, folks can talk about maybe who they think their replacement should be. So there's a lot going on right now. Uh, but setting all that stuff aside, how you been, Mark? What's what's your week been like? You doing anything? Uh, it was a pretty good week. You know, Halloween week came and went. Um watch a bunch of spooky movies i didn't learn that you are a giant fucking coward like i kind of knew it but i didn't realize to the extent uh when we were at the thing together last night uh ashley is a huge fan of horror movies and you know there weren't that many people so it felt more like a hangout than like a party and so we're like hey, maybe we should throw on a horror movie we're kicking the idea around and travis was opposed to it very opposed to it not just horror movies like we said hereditary and the babadook kind of as like a ha ha kind of thing he was like no and then we we're like cabin in the woods actually a great movie that's really fun and enjoyable not really a horror travis was still too scared he was scared of everything he the, the what he felt comfortable with was halloween town hocus pocus and charlie brown's chris uh, ha halloween and story. i don't even know what it's called. and uh, those are the three things we could no there was a fourth yet put on the screen what was it uh sp spooky buddies is that what it was called what am i forgetting the the spooky buddies one that we were spooky very... buddies yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that what it was, it was called? actually scary that whatever that casper dog was 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 nightmare fuel yeah, yeah spooky spooky buddies uh a fantastic film uh Oop, that... bud. <laughs> yeah highly recommend came out in 2011 directed by robert vince a prolific director uh there's a lot of different stuff underneath his belt highly highly recommend um Anyway, actually, it looks like he mostly does animal movies. He did Scaredy Cats, which was a TV show. He did Puff Academy, which is a TV show. This <laughs> oh, is a director shit. that literally Specifically, just... I'm going to link you this guy's thing on, on Skype, Mark. His, it's, his IMDb... it's horror and animal crossovers. Yeah, his IMDb is specifically only animal movies. I am actually shocked that there's somebody who's out there that is like known for this. It's fantastic. Well, not I shouldn't say known for it, but who's specialized in it. 
Um, people yeah. on the Twitch chat that say, say some new roster rumors or leaks or just try to tell me to leak stuff will be getting timed out by the mods. So this is your warning. It's really annoying. Uh, uh, Travis, yeah. blink twice if Bjergsen wants to play with Jensen. Maybe he wants to go to TL, but he just wants to play with Court JJ and not Jensen. Can you blink twice if there's any friction there? All right, here, I'll say this. There, there is a, like, uh, there are mixed rumors, mixed, mixed rumors, mixed rumors um, right now. So just, you know, who knows? But one of the mixed rumors that is out there uh, that I've heard from at least one person is that perhaps the Jensen ADC stuff is not going well. So I don't know if we talked about that yesterday, Mark, but. Uh, you, you mentioned it. That's, that's why I was saying that a little bit there, trying to lead into it. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, I mean, at the very least, that can be a talking point for, for calls tonight if people are like. Someone clip it and post it and pretend oh, it's don't, news. Don't tell them to do that. That's how we get banned <laughs> from the subreddit. That's don't include the part where I told you to do that, though. Don't do that. Uh, all right. <laughs> Shall, uh, what else? Um, other than spooky stuff, I don't really have that many updates. Do you? Well, well, let's let's talk about our project that we're going to try tomorrow. I didn't know if we were going to bring it up. Uh, I figure why not. So tomorrow, okay. Mark and I, very casually, we're just having fun. We're experimenting with this. We will be doing a uh, streamed talk show between just the two of us, and then a little bit of stuff afterwards. Um, not about League of Legends, though, but about Genshin Impact. So if you want to do that or you want to check it out, it'll probably be early afternoon tomorrow Pacific. But we're going to try our hand at creating some uh, Genshin Impact contento. Uh, okay. All we're going to do is talk about waifus. Um, it's really the only thing we have in the Travis We've and been Mark playing a lot. Tier list. Yep. Going to rank Husbandos too. Yeah. Hu Tao tomorrow. Yes. Are you, you're, and you're unsure of if you're going to roll for Hu Tao. Mark. I'm only at 7k primos, so I, I think I'm skipping because okay. I can't get staff with her too. Yeah. People say Imagining hashtag ad in the chat are just, it's like crazy. The It is the opposite of hashtag ad. I just lose so much money to that game. I wish they were paying me. I am only paying them a shit ton of money. All right. Uh, let's start taking calls. Yeah, I got two people pulled. I'm going to pull one, and then we'll get right into it, and then we can all keep pulling more people. Uh, sound good? Yep. Sounds good. All right. Great. Off Mark goes. Thank you to Chill Spencer, The Real Divert, uh, Green Fav, uh, Flick Nickum for 18 months, Night Strike, I Love You Chat, Neo Rivendare, uh, Dragon Severed Head, Trevor Monreal, uh, and Columbio. Colombian naked homeless man. Thank you for the 45 months. Thanks everyone. Vienna blew through her sponsor money on pulls. My God. Yeah. Well, at least she's blowing through sponsor money and not like, I guess it's technically my sponsor money because they, my sponsors pay me great. Great clockworm is here. Great clockworm. Where are you calling from? Uh, I'm from Richmond, Virginia, but I'm calling from Fairfax. I go to a college there. Richmond, Virginia, but calling from Fairfax. What do you want to talk about on the show? Um, I want to talk about, so with the news that seems to be confirmed from a couple sources that Perks will be headed back with um, Alfari to Vitality, that if you're a fan of NA, if you're a fan of Cloud9, as I both am, uh, I should be very happy with this year, with the results and the value Perks was able to bring. He was worth his weight in gold. Um, Cloud9 was the most successful in world all year, and Perks was a huge factor for that. Uh, so your microphone's breaking up a little bit. I don't know if you're hearing that too, Mark. Sorry. Uh, um, but I'm no, no, you, it, you were saying, what he said. yeah, we mostly heard what you said, which was that you think Perks is still worth his weight in gold this year and brought a ton of that value would, and people yeah, should be happy. Everyone's going to meme the 11 million, but you know, they probably didn't pay that much anyway, but Perks is very much worth his weight in gold, the value and the results that he brought. Okay. And, uh, are you sad that he's leaving? I'm very sad that he's leaving as a Cloud9 fan. I mean, I, he's 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 the Western GOAT. You know, if he wants to go back and compete in Europe, he's got the right to do so. But I think that you're crazy if you're an NA fan or a Cloud9 fan and you don't think that keeping him would be a fantastic option. Hmm. Okay. Mark, you want to go first or should I? Uh, 
Why don't you go first? I disagree. Uh, I <laughs> shocker really liked having perks over here as a fan of him as a person and a, and a player. Uh, but I don't feel as though during his time. Okay. I, I agree. He accomplished a lot. So I asked him during the press conference, the cloud nine press conference after they went out, like, what do you think about your first year at cloud nine? Especially cause at that point in time, we had already been hearing rumors that that might be his only year at cloud nine. And he had a really great answer, which he was talking about, like, you know, we made it to MSI. People don't understand how how hard it is to win a split in any of the, the major regions. And so, like, I'm really happy we were able to do that. Still able to go to Worlds. Made it out of groups. Like, he, I I am fun. I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to say this was a terrible year for Perks or that he did not do a great job. Uh, my question is, are we sure Cloud9 wouldn't have had these results with Niski? Uh, yes. I, really? Yeah, I don't mean to interrupt, but like Niski, I, I also am a big fan of Niski. I think he did play really well in Fnatic, but you do not get these results with Niski. You don't get them with Kenson. You don't get them with no. Well, I mean, technically they did get them with Niski last year. With a different the... roster. A different yeah. roster. Yeah, true. But um, I think you can talk about the top lane situation, Fudge versus, versus Licorice. Maybe in spring, you know, Niski carried a little hard. Or excuse me, uh, Perks needed to carry a little bit harder. Um, but it's at least debatable. I think it's it's more debatable than you're giving Niski credit for. Especially given that he went to Europe and had a good year. If, if Niski went to Europe and like didn't look good, fair enough. But given that Niski had a good year, it, it's hard to say. I mean, they missed Worlds with Niski in 2020. That was pretty tragic. Yeah, that was a whole roster boom situation, though. Um, <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't paint. I wouldn't put that on any one person. Yeah, and I, it's not like, and it's not like Perks just like brought them first seed to Worlds this year either, right? Like, I like I don't look at this uh, Cloud Nine and think, wow, Perks really lived up to what everyone's expectations were going to be for the way he came in. Guy didn't get top three uh, mid lane All Pro which I think a lot of people thought he would be like the, the shoe in for that. Um, I don't think that his stats were incredibly competitive, especially in summer. Uh, like, I don't, I don't think he was even the best player on C9 this year. I think ironically, like I, you can't technically call him a rookie, but L LCS rookie fudge was actually the, the best player on that team this year. So, I like. I don't think he has anything to regret necessarily, especially when he looks at his bank account. Um, and I and but even also from like the the trophy that they were able to lift in spring. Uh, Jack is just. I'm going to pretend he's not in the chat, and I I will ignore whatever it is that he says. Uh, other than right now, he as I say that he just wrote was but was perks a better investment than Sword Art? That's the yes. perfect. <laughs> that's the perfect Jack mis, mis, misdirection on this stuff. You know, if anybody <laughs> questions the perks investment, he could literally we, just say. But we, Sword we could Art. sit here and debate all day whether perks was a good investment or not. But one thing we could all agree on was he's a better investment than Sword Art. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> true, but I do, true. I do wonder. And and uh, we'll never get we'll never get I I will have a hard time ever believing it, that you know if Jack does give an answer to this kind of question that, that he's speaking from the heart when he says it but like I I would bet that Jack probably looks back on this year and is like would have been happy to keep Niski I mean I don't know maybe he was able to sign some like cool sponsors or something like that ha saying having said that he could bring perks over here I don't know but like I just also. Well, I guess I'm very curious what, I don't know if we'll ever find out what uh, Vitality paid for the buyout, because maybe that helps make this year cheaper yeah, or something. Yeah, I think, but... may I say something, or Mark, I mean, you can go ahead. May I say something yeah, let me, let me hop in here for a second. I sure. would say, yeah, sure, sure. for me, the, the difficult part is, like, so much of this answer, I feel like, depends on the business component, because I'm with you about, like, the achievements part. Like, Perks felt like a pretty integral part of a team that had the best year in NA by far, and uh, you know was was reasonably successful at Worlds and everything. Like you know he he had some big games at Worlds and had some stinkers, but like you know that's kind of perks a lot of the time. So like I I think more or less from a achievement level, it's it's, it's kind of hard to criticize them. I think there's points that his individual play looked more suspicious than you would have wanted. And so you know Travis always harps on that he didn't even make an All Pro team in summer. Point 
Uh, and I, I think there's a little bit of validity to that, but at least when, when it mattered, you more or less got results. Um, I think the part for me is just when you signed perks, what you were thinking was not a one year rental. Like that was supposed to be a franchise player signing for sure. I agree. So like the fact that that's not what happened means something went wrong. Either the expectations didn't work out. Maybe perks wasn't happy. You know, maybe it's all on his side, who knows, but either way, I mean, like that was definitely a move to make your new franchise player. Um, and, and it didn't work out for whatever reason. So I think from that angle, you can say that, yeah, it, it, something had to have gone wrong. So it was a bit of a failure. Jack in the chat says, Niski's great. Perks is great. I think the hardest thing is I don't have either now, seemingly confirming the reports. Uh, and then he, he, he says, also said, yeah, 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 the one year thing is hard QQ. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's tough. Also, it sounds like he's not getting Niski. Um, so maybe that's off the, off the table if it ever was on the table. Or that was the biggest misdirection of all time. Yeah. Now I don't have either, but in three Once that weeks, ink dries. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's a docu sign. Um, no, they can't. They can't do anything yet. But anyway, I, uh, I don't know. I just have a really hard time thinking that that was the case. I also just, I don't know. I don't know if we have a caller that's going to be on this. This is going to be the the drum that I beat for the next three weeks so everybody prepare for this i'll probably do it my own video on it but like dude it just fucking sucks for the lcs when we do things like perks is coming let's put him in all these videos let's hype up the fact that he's here like he's part of the lcs oh my god look he's gonna try to do all this stuff everything's great perks is gone okay remember when we said bjergsen was like a great <laughs> person to so it was great whenever he was here like he's back and now he's on a different team like i know tsm bjergsen but now he's just somebody else like it's it's so and like it's not just perks it's like alfari and sword art seemingly as well so uh I like feel it's like not to this healthy. point to this point you know like if you turned league of legends in north america into a show and it was a seasonal show you would be like what the fuck are these writers doing they keep just adding characters and deleting characters they said beer since retired then they bring him back like these writers can't commit to anything. And yeah. I think there's some no, truth great drama. <laughs> no, you're like, where's the, where's the consistency? I, I, I'm with Travis a little bit. Like we were all talking about perks, about what a great addition he is to the league, even if he doesn't level it up individually, you know, it, it's just like how we all talked about him on the talk shows and it's, it's gone. I mean, down. we invested considerable, like here's what people need to understand is you invest time and money and energy into building the brands of people when they come to, a region or when they start playing in the LCS, etc. It's like an investment and you lose almost all of that whenever that player then leaves, you know? Um, and so now you have to start, we have to go back and we have to build up new players again. It's like, I mean, thankfully people already care about Bjergsen. So that's really helpful. But like that was a complete, like the Bjergsen coming back is completely unrelated to perks. Uh, as much as, you know, the TSM subreddit wanted to believe it, it was when they were like, haha, Bergson's coming back before they realized they were losing him. Um, and it, it's like, it, imagine if Bjergsen hadn't come back. Like, imagine if next year it was like, guess what, guys? 2022 is going to be none of the big names from last year that we had signed. And also Bjergsen and Doublelifter are still retired, you know? It's it's a blessing he's coming back. Um, so I... Uh -huh. I I look at the perks thing is a pretty big waste in, in almost every category. I mean, I, I was happy to have interviewed him. It was fun to have him here. Uh, but I, I don't think he was probably worth the money unless the vitality buyout is really great. I don't think that, uh, he was worth like the investment because he's only here for like a year and I don't, it's not like he led us to semifinals or something in the, at worlds, uh, or even like a great scoring at, at MSI. So I, um, I'm not feeling, I'm not thrilled on some people in, into a chat, like Papa Smithing and stuff. We're talking about like, there's other people who got built up or should have been built up over the year. Peter Dunn was also memeing about, you know, like, well, that's true for the teams, TL, TSM and C9. And I think, you know, maybe I think we, there was at least some coverage of those teams and players. Um, I think Jizuke went a long way to changing his name from his 2020 split as much as I, you know, it's like, oh, it's the same plot line, EG and, and Jizuke. Like, Jizuke, I think, had a lot better split. And I think some of those stories we did cover, maybe they could have been covered a little bit better, but I, I still think um, it's still a loss to have 
just have half of these storylines disappear. Oh my God, Alfar is the best top laner we've ever seen. In North. Oh, see you, dude. Saw him for one year. Yeah. So like, the, it's still a loss, even if there are other storylines that we could be talking about more. No, and people uh, will always say that, like, oh no, but there were these other people, and I'm like, cool, but who was very prominent in like the LCS summer piece, you know? And wouldn't it be cool if that had been Jazuke instead of Perks or something? I don't know. Like it. Yeah, obviously, EG would have had to be there, but you get the point. Like it's, it's there. There was investment made that is now lost, uh, and we do this a lot in North America, uh, especially Think about all recently. those hype pieces and interviews that like we could cut from Bjergsen and Doublelift's careers in like season eight that were recorded in season three whenever they like went up against each other. Literally fucking useless <laughs> for some of the pieces we recorded this year. Like unless Perks is coming, but maybe he'll come back. I don't know. Uh, and then we can we can cut together his "I'm coming to change the region" and meme him for it. You know. Yeah, we were. I I and Riot independently were trying to build up like a Sword Art Core JJ rivalry type thing. You know, like in the opening video, Sword Art's like, "Oh, I'm coming for him" or whatever, and Core JJ is like, "Yeah, I'm not worried about it." You know, I was interviewing them and getting those types of quotes too, if I recall, like towards the beginning of the year. Blah. Now it's dead. So cool. There goes that. You know, it's just how do you build rivalry in the LCS whenever we're just spin the wheel on which players are playing this year? Um, Abadage versus Perks. Here's the run. Oh. <laughs> Did we say Perks? Abadage we versus Pearson. Jensen. Oh, he's in the bot lane. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's, it's, it's so tough, you know, it's so tough. Um, anyway, great clockworm. Sorry. I disagree with you. Mark seems like he's a little bit more in your camp, but, uh, maybe not completely. Uh, thank you for the call. Anything you want to shout out before we take a quick break? Um, I guess I'll shout out the fact, um, I still do love my boy cloud nine Niski and I'm not, you know, shitting on any way. Um, and I do think I would definitely agree that. The other members of this Cloud9 team were, you know, also very integral to the success they had this year. Vulcan's my favorite player in the LCS. I got his bobblehead sent on my desk, so um, I don't think Cloud9's going to necessarily be bad next year without perks. I guess I'm just saying, like, he was a good investment. He brought a lot of success, and, uh, you know, he was worth his weight in gold. But, uh, yeah, what will uh, you think if Vulcan's on C9 next year? Uh, I would be sad, but I would I'd probably root for whatever team Vulcan's on. I love Vulcan, man. He's, 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 he's the good, so... He's my guy. But um, yeah, thanks so much for having me. It's been a while since I called on, but I've called on a couple times before. It's, um, it's good to talk again. But uh, thanks so much for having me. Uh, you know, go Cloud9. Very good. Thank you so much, Greg Cockerham, for the call, and we'll catch you next time. Sure. All right, time to do a quick break. Uh, and the break is to talk about Alienware. Uh, you can go to alienware.com slash Travis, and right up at the top, there's this beautiful image of the new Alienware Aurora now in the R13 and R14 uh, builds. You can take a look at those and just look at the fantastic case. They're bringing uh, for optional, because I think some people like this, some people don't, a transparent side to the case uh, where you get to get that beautiful look inside of it if that's something you're going for and you get some nice lights in there. But it's really cool that they were able to uh, take the Aurora and really evolve it, make it uh, next level, I think, for the end of 2021 and into 2022. So I know a lot of people right now, they're like trying to, maybe, you, maybe you've even built your computer in the past and you're like, oh man, it's so hard to find graphics cards or something like that. You know, maybe just make it easier on yourself. Go take a look at these systems and see what you think. We got a code for you. Uh, doesn't work all the time on, on some of the newer stuff. So you'll have to check it depending on the build. Uh, but that's in the description of the YouTube video. If you're watching this there, you can go check it out if you're listening to the podcast somewhere. Uh, but it's a, a beautiful machine that they've put together. Highly recommend taking a look at it. Uh, really love what they're doing over there. And, you know, just think about them because they've got some great, by the way, that's the other thing is like the sales are coming up. Uh, I know it's the first of November. So perhaps that means I can officially start talking about Black Friday. Uh, they've got some really cool deals that go on around this time of the year. So keep an eye on the stuff. Maybe it'll move a little bit around the holidays if you're uh, thinking about buying something during some of these holiday season sales. And uh, thank you so much to Alienware for sponsoring so much of what we do here uh, at Travis Gafford Industries. All right, Mark is off to grab the next caller. Red Rain, thank you for the 18 months. Surrender Petty, 
Uh, Washi, uh, Ar- Arvigs, Ice Shredder 22. Thanks everyone for the subs. I really appreciate it. <clears throat> Coming along here. Oh, Blue Jay is here. Blue Jay, welcome back. It's been a bit since you've been on the show. Remind everyone where you're calling from. Hello, Colin from Ontario, Ontario, Canada. Yes, not California. Ontario, Canada. What do you want to talk about on the show? Uh, so my take is kind of related to what you guys were just talking about. It is uh, with all three major imports being Alfari, Sword Art, and Perks leaving the LCS after just one year. Should we worry about the LCS being able to import talent, like they import that talent specifically, uh, since North America doesn't have a good history of developing that kind of talent itself? And uh, it also doesn't help that two of those three had major drop-offs in their level of play. And then a uh, follow-up question is... Did we spend is, all our money we're... on them and now we're, we can't, <laughs> yeah. we're out of money? We can't go get import, imports? Like, we spent yeah, these, then, the money on these guys and now we're broke. Well, there's that. And then the other question is, should we even want the imports considering your return on investment can vary anywhere from core JJ to, like, crown levels? Like, there's a lot of variance in what you get from the imports. <sighs> what do you think, Blue Jay? I don't know because, like, so we haven't had a good, um, uh, what's the word, um, talent uh, development system, and it's kind of like new. Like, only lately has North America really put a focus into that, and so I don't think we know what we're going to get out of it yet. So, like, if we can actually develop some players, it's like, oh, who, like, who cares then? You know. But if we can't, then it's like, well, damn, now we might be in deep shit because if even Perks can, we'll say, struggle for lack, like for his um, level of gameplay, we'll call it struggle, uh, then anyone can, right? Drop. I mean, maybe uh, drop-off is also kind of dramatic. But yeah, I mean, it, it's hard to say he really struggled in the LCS, but it certainly yeah, did not feel like he was playing his his level of gameplay, level. I would yeah. consider it struggling. Yeah, and I would also say he definitely dro- dropped Warren. off for sure. I-, I know. Sorry, last caller, but he dropped off. Mark, what were you saying? I mean, drop off sounds like he's not c- coming back. I think you just say he had a slump is probably the, the closest thing. But I mean, it's it's kind of splitting hairs because he was successful, but just not like maybe he was okay. overhyped, didn't live up to the hype. I don't know what, what phrase you want to use, but I-, I think there's some truth to what you're saying. Shout out to Pact in the live chat because he says didn't meet expectations. I think that's a lot better way to put it. Yeah. Um. I mean, go ahead, Mark. I think so. One angle of this for me is that I don't even feel like it's necessary to blame the players who didn't meet expectations because a large part of it is like new environment. Yeah. Let's say a worse environment. (laughs) Um, North America is just not as conducive to success on, especially the international stage. Um, Sword Art definitely struggled individually, but he has probably some level of culture shock that maybe Perks and Alfari didn't have, even though, they, you know, they, they still get some as Europeans in America. Um, definitely a lot worse if it's not your even second language, like, you know, fluency levels kind of thing. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a struggle. And I think another angle is that you're playing with worse teammates. And this is something that, like, doesn't get emphasized enough. But, like, G2 last year, even though they struggled, you know, in 2020... They were still decent, you know. They're still pretty good, um, and I think a large, like a number of people on C9, you could argue, not as good. Um, no offense, I don't want to like flame anyone or, or start anything, but we're talking about one of the greatest Western teams of all time compared to C9. Like, um, you know, I think League is such a interconnected game that like if you're a great mid laner, but suddenly all your lanes are losing a little bit more and your jungler is not quite as consistent. You know, or or whatever, like it does influence your performance too. So, you know, going from Bin and Huang Feng and like all these guys for Sword Art, you know, like yeah, it's a, it's a downgrade. Caps <laughs> for perks. G, the G two roster may be a bit different than some of our LCS rosters. Um, the one I'll say is Alfari probably had better teammates than he fucking had on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he did. Well, he, he certainly had great. better results. Yeah, so you know. Sure. <laughs> yeah, that too. I, I just, okay. I think my desire for imports in joining North America and the LCS, I think over time, it, I struggle a lot with this because it's hype as fuck when Perks comes over here. Like that was the most fun for me in the off season of last year. And it's like, like the off season, I have such a, uh, weird feelings about because 
it fills me with joy and glee and it's like really exciting and like as as much as the chat and everybody is like berating me for roster rumors and leaks like i'm behind the scenes being like i just want to hear all the cool stuff and then i hear so much and there there's so many different spicy things and you have to kind of figure out like what is actually happening what's actually you know sorting sorting the signal through the, for the noise and at the same time I I still stand by everything I just said for the last caller about why I think it was probably not great that Perks ended up coming over here because it's like, it's, uh, you know, I, I've gained some weight during the, the pandemic and uh, it has given me some perspective in that sometimes uh, something can be really enjoyable and yet also unhealthy. Uh, and, uh, you, you know, just maybe, gained that perspective. Maybe, maybe <laughs> eating. Yeah, I've realized that now at the age of uh, 32. So, uh, all the chocolate that I was eating last night at the Halloween party. So I, I think that that's kind of where my head is at is like these, these really big name folks who perhaps are not going to stick around. It's, uh, it's rough. I think the places where I am excited about, like, let's say Osh never became like part of the LCS region or whatever. I think picking up fudge. Would have been, in fact, that's when Jack did pick him up and stuck him on the academy side. I think that was great. Uh, I think there are probably some other players over in, in Europe that are are in a similar position, or maybe in the in the East. I think that stuff is, even though it's less exciting to me, I think it is healthier over time. One of the other things that somebody pointed out to me recently is like, you look at the uh, the players that are still here. Uh, Mark, you and I kind of talked about this. It's like of the players that are competing in LCS that are from Europe, it's like almost entirely this old school generation that have been here for longer than a year. It's like Sven and Bjergsen and Jensen. Like there's there's not Santorin. Santorin, yeah. Yeah, there's not as many people that have come over like Sven might be the Sven might be one of the only examples of somebody who's I, come I said over. Poe. Yeah, Poe. But even Poe is like feels like a lot longer than there. You know, it's just it's it doesn't feel like we're often able. In fact, like there were some Nis, some Nisky rumors. I, I've they've kind of died now, down now, so maybe it's probably not happening. But there were some Nisky back to C nine rumors at one point in time that I didn't feel comfortable going with, and I'm happy I didn't since they've died down. But but like that, that would I was like, this would be fucking hilarious if it happens. This guy would be back in LCS for the third time. <laughs> like, oh my god! You know how, how how is anybody supposed to build fandom or storylines? You 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 imagine like the stat sheet comparing him on the broadcast, where there's just like, well, he was here this year, and then like Gaps he was not here. This year. Then here's this. Yeah, you just like trying to compare it against some somebody else. It's just. I don't know. So uh, I think I am I am less, even if I'm excited in the moment around big signings, I think those are less healthy for the league than um, folks who are like pretty, like less exciting, but perhaps are going to be here for longer um, and perhaps like have less reason to boomerang back to, to LEC. Sure. But then there's like, if the development system in North America doesn't pan out the way we would all like it to, we could be in deep shit. Yeah. What does deep shit look like? We don't do I, well I at don't worlds know. in MSI. <laughs> yeah, true. Same old, same like, old. Like, oh no, <laughs> that would be terrible if we were unable to compete on the international stage. No, but the thing is, though, is that things can get worse. I know it feels like it can't, but things can get worse. Yeah, we could lose some planes or something. I, I, like... I, I agree with with what you're saying. Like, we're 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 it's half meaning, but like we could start dropping planes, Travis. <laughs> we could only have two teams yeah. in groups. Like, it can get worse. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I get that, um, and I don't want to discount the fact that like we were arguably more competitive in groups this year, but like a lot like part of the reason we were more competitive in groups this year was because of uh perks and alfari and they're now gone right. um like i it, it can get worse but it can also get better right like what yes, if we can. didn't have to to pay players a bajillion dollars to get us slightly beyond groups sometimes you know what if we were able to find more dannies and and put up even similar results to what we're putting up right now, but 
at a fraction of the cost with players that are going to stay in the league for the next five to six to eight years. Uh, and you know, like I, I, we, I think that's worth pursuing. Or the good old I mean, argument of you could put that money towards the development system, right? I don't know if that ever happens, but that's an argument I've heard. Yeah. Time. No, it's true. I mean, I, I feel like the, the truth is that there's going to be something in the middle because I do feel like when you, you hit on a Im- import that works well, like even Abadage when, you know, Papa Smithy's in chat saying Abba's not going anywhere anytime soon, you know, like great. You have a, a foundational piece around your team and who knows where you go from here, you know? Um, Core JJ, for example, like seems like a TL lifer at this point, who knows? But like, you know, I, I do think there's still value in, in them. Like maybe there was a bit of an overreach this last year. Uh, it sounds like a lot of people are not thrilled about the the sword art signing and how much money that was. And maybe, you know, perks was a little bit more than, than you should have paid for it. But the idea of bringing him over is not one I'm opposed to, you know, like if that, if, if caps comes over next year, am I really going to be like, Oh fuck. Assuming caps looks okay this year. Okay. But what if caps year, comes over next year? I mean, in 2023 or something like that. And then, like, just boomerangs back a year later. You know what I mean? Like, I would also be excited I'm about Caps. I'm like, I'm okay with that risk. Like. You're, you're frozen. I don't know Hello? if you're waiting to say something. Mark. Yeah, no, I don't know. My, my, everything just cut out. I actually froze for a little bit myself, visually, <laughs> just, like, waiting for the sound to come back. I said, I'm okay with that risk. I don't know if that came through. Oh, yeah, yeah. I heard you say that. I, but it sounded like you were going to say something else. Um, no, I, I, yeah, I am, uh, I just like us to, to calm down a bit. Maybe that's the best way. Maybe what Mark is saying is like somewhere in the middle would be good. We need more roster stability. We definitely need more roster stability. Guess what guys? Like I'm not, I'm not hearing that the roster stability is coming in this off season. Like even beyond those guys, (laughs) like. Like I, I heard that. Um, EG is is. Uh, well, I was gonna say happen. that. Yeah, I've heard. There's there's rumors abound that that Danny might be leaving EG, or other players might be leaving the team as well. This one's uh, instead this of one's Danny. for Kelsey Moser. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. Chovy is available. That's that's for Kelsey. So like that's the shit that drives me crazy, right? Like you, and he, and maybe he'll stay, and then it'll just mean that because my understanding is that they're. Probably not going to, like, if, if Danny's there, then a lot of the other players won't be there. Or if a lot of their players stay, like, there's just no world in which uh, you have the majority of that roster stay with Danny and vice versa. Um, that is that is, that is is the, the rumor of the scuttlebutt that I've heard from multiple sources. Uh, and, and it's like, that shit just feels bad, right? Like, here you are, EG, you're always talking about talent development, and you're always talking about North America... And then you find this like diamond in the rough and maybe they'll build around him, uh, but it might cost them most of the rest of their roster. Um, or maybe like he'll end up on another team, but it's just, it's, it's crazy, right? It's, it's absolutely crazy. Um, yeah. Now everybody's just typing two or three letter team names in front of, of Danny. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. Who knows? Who knows what will happen? But uh, that's that's the type of stuff that I hear, and I'm like, that's spicy. Everybody, when I say that, Twitch chat explodes because it's crazy. But it's also like, is that healthy? Uh, probably not. Blue Jay, thanks so much for the call. Anything you want to shout out before we uh, go on to our next caller? Uh, yeah, I want to shout out uh, a prop sheet that me and J and T made uh, for Worlds 2021. I'm gonna put it in the uh, self promo channel, but it's free to enter. And it's just, I don't know, I think it'll make Worlds a lot more fun to watch. So if anyone wants to join the prop sheet, I'll put it in the self-promo channel in Travis's Discord, and you guys can check it out and maybe win some money. So thank you for that, and uh, thank you for having me on the show, guys. Yeah, have a good one. Goodbye. I think somebody just tried to open my front door. Um, Kobe's not here. There's no reason anybody should be trying to open my front door. I I sent Ashley over. Oh, yeah. Just to scare me? No. Uh, Yeti, thank you for the four months. ENS Hero. Should I get the next caller? Thank you for the prime. Yeah. Am I? Uh, What do I? Okay. (laughs) EP, thank you for the 25 months. Uh, Akajar, Ice Shredder. I believe I got everybody else. RVX. I think that should be it. Um, (laughs) 
General Sniper in the chat. General Sniper, when are you when are you able to play yet in the LCS? What's going on with you? Has it been enough years? Come on. We're all we're all waiting. I owe General here, this will be my public apology. Last year I was gonna try to do a documentary on General Sniper, and then we just ended up getting really busy on stuff and I, I kind of ghosted him, which is not my intent. And uh Damn, I, you I ghosted the fucking next great North American player. He's going to remember that when he's in the LCS three years. When he shows up in the LCS. I'm going to interview with him ever again. Yeah, I'm going to have to retire when he shows up uh, from this job because I will be officially out. Uh, out Imagine if fucking Doublelift 10 years ago messaged you and you just ghosted Doublelift's ass. Where would you be? Uh, Nowhere. I was working at like a tech company or something. <laughs> uh, I'd be a lobbyist. Lion Nation is here. Lion Nation, where are you calling from? On from Seattle. Seattle. What do you want to talk about on the show? Uh, my take was that TSM announcing that they want to rebuild and try and have a developmental roster, uh, and also specifically addressing the fact that expensive rosters have failed for them in the past is like the biggest news, the biggest LCS news that nobody seems to be talking about. So I want to, I, does anybody have the exact quote from this? Because I've heard a couple different uh situations and and by the way like this this is this topic is so near and dear to mark that he's starting to tear up right now just thinking about it <laughs> uh, um uh, it was in the video correct me if i'm wrong lion nation yeah it was in the uh, video i'm just wondering if anybody has the direct quote because i've heard it misquoted a couple different ways and i don't remember it specifically well enough to paraphrase it and not fuck it up because it was like a very specific thing yeah i guess blue I'm jay probably, i am probably fucking up the paraphrase blue jay says so we, the quote is According to Reggie, or sorry, according to Blue Jay, Reggie says, quote, we intend to focus on up and coming players and to build our team culture around these rising stars. And Parth says, to clarify, this does not mean TSM will be an all rookie development roster, which like, so I'm glad that we got the exact quote because I I felt like those two it's things are so much. both sides. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, for me, for me. The way that I was saying it earlier on a stream is it's exactly the type of thing that you would hear from like a Dignitas or an Immortals. Uh, you know what I mean? Where they're like, listen, we believe a lot in like young players who are <clears throat> inexpensive. And that doesn't mean that we're not going to win everybody. Okay. We think there's a ton of value out there in these players that, um, and so like, I am very curious to see what that means for TSM because it's like, it does well, feel also... very cake and have it eat, eat it too. They also said in a Reddit comment, Reggie said that Hooney and Speaker will be playing with the team next year. So, like, on some level, this is already true. Like, you could literally fill the next three lineups with rookie talent, and his statement would still be true because Spika three, and three Hooney players, are yeah. not are not rookies. So, like, you know, it, it could still be where it is mostly a developmental roster, and it is still mostly young players, but you still have some veterans, which is how almost every, no one no one really does five rookies. So, like... In some sense, his his statement can still be true um, and still be more developmentally. Right, focused. right. And I appreciate the acknowledgement of, you know, we spent a lot of money before and we've gone zero six or we didn't even make it to Worlds, right? Like, that's the other the other the other other half of that that gives me more hope for the validity of, of the, I don't know, of the promise. I mean, I kind of hope that, I don't know, because I've heard rumors both ways on what EG is going to do. And so if they end up like taking that spot of like big spender for next year, but you would hope that if TSM is less in the running to like bid for like big name stars and spend a ton of money that actually causes salaries to go down a little bit for at least top talent. Um, that is, that is kind of the hope that I have right now. Cause I don't think that we're in a healthy spa state right now with the, the money that's being spent. So, um, sorry. So right, Lion Nation, you're saying that this is like a really big story that they're heading, that they're like, we're out of the money race. Yeah. I think it's, it seems like a really big deal. Give Like, I feel like I was looking at like the Reddit thread after they announced, you know, after the announcement video and it was all like, well, guess I'm not a fan of TSM anymore. You know, Berg dirksen has gone. Um, and I don't know. It feels like we, last year, we had this huge conversation about developmental talent and, and trying to, like, bring new people in. And now it's like, gosh, I hope that TSM does well this year with hopefully, a, a you know, at least a few rookie players so that we can get some, I don't know, some hope he's going. Well, so I, I do think it's an interesting take because 
as long as CSM's been in the LCS, they've been competitive. They have been trying to be the best team in the league. And this feels like the first time I've ever heard them say that's not their goal. Right? Well, so like, now they... people on Twitch chat are saying that Reggie's AMA, which I think has been ongoing for a while. Maybe he's been going back in and updating it, but that he said that there's still going to be top three spenders in North America. I don't see the... Uh, I'm trying to go through the AMA right now to try to find it. Um, it would still be a top three spender. Well, okay, that's a pretty different story then. So I don't know where he said video. it, but here, here's here's some interesting stuff that is relevant to this. He said FTX is not allowed by Riot LCS both on our jersey broadcast or name. It's hard to justify spending FTX's investment when LCS provides no value to them. LOL is around ten to fifteen percent of our aggregate fan base. We've invested that entire budget to expand globally and are now involved in 14 games with 18 rosters. Our other players and teams need support too. We are top spender second in the league, which like, I actually, th I'm curious. I thought they were the highest spender, but uh, in the league and only, only behind the highest spender by a maximum of 10 to 15% and will continue to be a top spender. LCS viewership is down 20% last year and the top spending teams spend more than two to three Bottom teams added together. Being an organization that came from League, we're one of the teams that spend the most worldwide. Spending more won't solve our problems. We want domestic results. We'll need to look within. Um, if we want international results, our teams and NA need to work together. I don't know what it means when he says our teams and NA need to work together. I think maybe like we all need to go spend a ton of money. I think um, he's saying more scrim culture and yeah, probably maybe. stuff like that. Um, so it is kind of confusing because like, uh in air and some areas uh he seems to imply that they're pulling back a bit and then in this area he says they're still going to be a top spender so i don't know what that means um definitely some mixed messaging going on which i guess probably just means that they're like keeping their options like i don't know we can do whatever we want because we never actually committed to anything yeah i mean some people in twitch are saying like oh it's it's more like spending on development and infrastructure but like that's not really what it feels like the messaging is here. Right. I, I can't... I'll say it, it's less clear than their messaging was in the past about what they're doing, to, to make a weaker version of the statement I was just making. Um, you know? But, okay, but at the end of the day, nobody's memeing TSM Chovy this year, right? I mean, they're still memeing it for the sake <laughs> okay, of Okay, they're memeing it, but nobody... If that happened, it would be, I would say, extremely surprising. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think the way it sounds to me is like they're still going to spend money on their org. They're not going to go full Golden Guardians or Immortals and some of these other orgs. But I also don't think they're balling out looking for new imports. It sounds like they're looking internally for players that they can invest in. Um, and some of those players might still take an investment. Like... I, I don't know. Maybe they, they try and grab. He says, our budget is still competitive and will still be a top spender. I'd rather just spend more across the board on several players in Academy and Academy than on one to two big names. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that still says to me you're not signing anyone splashy. You know? Like yeah. you're, you, you can still pump resources into Academy and get some good players. I mean, the, other, the, the scary thing for him might be that, or for TSM fans, and this is just like an example, right? But like CLG might have been considered, depending on how you define top spender, I think CLG might have been top five, might have slipped into top five last year in spending. No, I think 100T and EG were still up there. No, more. yeah, they're still going to beat them out. So, yeah, I don't know. I just, it's it's interesting. I get, like, to me that sounds more like an, a 2021 EG roster where, like, EG was spending a lot, but also not on, like, big names. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, it's it's hard to, to see who fits the profile that they're kind of describing for themselves. Yeah, I mean, I guess we'll find out soon, but... I uh I don't know I'm I'm very curious. Uh, yeah. okay, I, Anyways, here, here, I, I, I still okay. I still like the call about calling attention to like what TSM's exactly. future is more than just tunneling on the Bjergsen angle. Yeah, exactly. it got overshadowed by Bjergsen, and even if I don't know, I guess there's some doubts about how it's going to go down. But I hope that it goes down with more rookie talent, and I want more attention on that story. Well, here here's where I'll I'll send this conversation. 
I am so curious to see what happens to TSM next year from a fan base perspective. Okay, Mark and I have been doing this long enough. We can tell you guys that, like, at, at the very least, there was a point in time where the vast... If you were an LCS fan, chances were you were a TSM fan. Like, they, they were... The majority of the fans in the LCS were TSM fans. I think that that has sort of started to split out with, like, C9 and TL coming up and then maybe, like, Hunter T edging in a spot. Uh, and then, basically, there's almost nobody else right now that's on the fandom side. Um... And, and I, I really wonder if Bjergsen leaves, if they, they put together a roster that's like Huni, Spika, two European rookies you haven't ever heard of. And like, I don't know, J Jensen, like, is that enough to command TSM's fans? By the way, that's not a leak. It was just an example. Everybody calm your jets. Um, like, I don't, I don't know. I think there's a good, ch and like, let's say they, they just consistently place like fourth and fifth for a while with that. Uh, I am, I don't know. Like, I just, I wonder what happens. One, I wonder if those fans stick around in the LCS. I wonder if they stick around for TSM or if they go elsewhere. It's like a very, nothing like this has ever happened before in the LCS to Lion Nation's call. We've never seen a situation where TSM has put together a roster that might be like way, especially, I mean, at least when they had this roster this year, they had Bjergsen as the coach and a lot of people were curious about that. Like there's a very yeah. good chance this is the least compelling roster in League of Legends history that TSM has put together. That is like kind of my takeaway from what they are saying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I feel like that's a pretty strong possibility. Even this year, if you weren't hyped, you know, people were debating like this roster will probably get fourth. Hint to did, but like you know, I remember, I remember thinking power ranking them fourth or third maybe. Um, and you're like, well, Huni's not the best in his role. Like they didn't. Normally, it's like TSM has multiple players best in role, and this play it was like maybe none. And like Speaker turned out to develop to to be that for for summer in, in jungle. But like, you know, it doesn't feel like that com is going to be any sort of conversation that you have next split. Yeah. It also goes into like the overall, the like push and pull of the community of wanting more rookie talent, and then as soon as they don't succeed on their first try, like trying to kick them out. And I wouldn't be surprised if TSM doesn't do well this year, and also will be very sad to see when or if, or if or when the TSM fans then like whatever blow up and get mad. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure they will. I'm. I mean, like even even if they're like middling, you know. People will be like free speaker from jail. You I know, will like... say, props to props props to Reggie because I think the Q and A is very well written, and he seems to have pretty good answers for a lot of the fans' questions and stuff. So like, he's doing. I think he's done a good job of recovering at least the subreddit, uh, if not the broader fan base, from sort of the edge they were on whenever it was like Sword Art's gone, uh, uh, Bjergsen's gone, Lena seems maybe gone. Like it. It was all hitting on one day. All those folks were um, seemingly in a really bad place, and I think I think at least his answers have helped some people feel better. But uh, I, I don't know, to this point that we're having a conversation about right now. It's like, uh, how are they going to feel if they end up sixth in spring and summer with the players that, other than Spica, people don't super care about? I don't know. Lion Nation, thanks so much for the call. Anything you want to shout out before we go on to our next caller? Uh, just uh, Game Fuel, Alienware, and uh, Riff Reaction. Oh, very good. Thank you so much for the shout outs. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. On to our next caller. Uh, 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 EPH, thank you for the 25 months. White Tiger, uh, Matt, Mesh Beard. Ein Scrub Vaults, a C9 is life, and Tom Shu. Tom Shu for three years. Says uh, Yasui for LCS. I think he was in the LCS recently. I forget how that went. Uh, All right, I'm going to do allergy medicine. I'm coming right back. Okay, off Mark goes to the, the allergy medicine. Uh, hey, it's Dave. Is it Dave or David? Which do you prefer? Whatever you want. Doesn't matter to me. Uh, Dave is a, a man who does a lot of uh, TikTok content uh, around League of Legends esports that I think is quite good. And also he uh, he's helped me in the past with some data stuff. So good to have you on the show. Uh, remind everyone where you're calling from. 
calling from hell's kitchen in new york city hell's kitchen uh what do you want to talk about on the show so i want to address some of the negativity surrounding worlds and how that spawns a lot from co-streaming a topic that i know you've talked about a good bit well there's no co-streaming at worlds no but the live event viewing does still pull a significant amount of viewership and okay. ultimately i do think that the the negativity that we saw surrounding the lcs this year specifically was definitely driven in part by some people's disdain for the broadcast but more so criticisms levied by co-streamers including double lift ls dom etc now using ls as the example because he was supposed to be on tonight and i was looking forward to this debate but unfortunately it can't happen uh he is right to criticize in the position that he's in he was supposed to be the coach of t1 at the time so he the way he views his stream is how a coach would look at their players when they're messing up he's going to get mad and he has a very similar vibe in that sense the issue is not him acting like that it is the fact that all of the people that watch him that then go on to say the same things on social media to basically perpetuate the negativity that is there beyond just what is happening in the moment is bleeding everywhere. And you're seeing it most notably this past weekend in the semifinals where we had this great series between Dam One and T1. Everybody was hyped. It goes into the game five series the next day and everybody's losing their minds over how bad it is and automatically projecting that onto the world's finals now as well, possibly overshadowing any hype even if it does go to five games and it's a semi-decent series there's automatically going to be negative views coming into this that are going to persuade people from feeling good from the jump so okay uh some some fill-ins on this stuff uh because i i do think that it was interesting where i was like monitoring social media during semis and you kind of especially the I don't know, you kind of saw this this mix, especially on the second day of like people being like, this is hype as shit. And then other people being like, make it stop. This is terrible. Um, and I, th I assume that's what you're referencing. Yeah, but that's also symbolic of many things that we've seen throughout the entire year through LCS. Not as much LEC, but more like the co-streaming elements that are now bleeding into that later. Yeah. I mean, I've talked in the past about how... I think co-streaming can be kind of tough. It's funny. We haven't really talked about it from a world's perspective, but from a North American perspective, I, I've talked about how I think it's really rough when I tune into I, I preferred watching co-streams this year. Uh, I want to clarify that. In the how beginning. fucking that, dare you? That was the majority of where I was. I thought uh, the new caster that they brought into the LCS was very lackluster. And uh, most analysts... How dare you shit on Raz like that, dude? That what did have... Most, most analyst desk segments that didn't have Raz. Well, Raz ghosted on the party last night, so, you know. Um, well, you said caster. Raz, Raz was a caster. If you said I know, something about analyst desk, I, I would have said, I said, would have said someone else. I would have done anything to deflect away from me. Yes, I know. I know you would have. <laughs> um, but anyway, I preferred watching the, the especially like the sneaky Medios double one. But it would suck whenever I'm watching it and Peter would be like, I can't believe this player is even allowed in the LCS, you know. Because um, I'm like, that's... It's not, we're not really building this player uh, for future success with the fans, you know? And I and I do think, like, Jazuke took forever and really basically had to win all pro for people to turn around their opinion on him. Um, but I haven't really thought about it much from the world's perspective. Uh, Mark, what do you think? Um, I don't know, to be honest. I feel like... There's a negativity problem. There's always been a bit of a negativity problem, even before co-streaming was really a thing, or like the content creators were necessarily as, or this this batch. I mean, like there were always talk shows, and the talk shows were always critical. Like going back to Summoning Insight, you know, that used to be the platform, and it's maybe been democratized a bit between all the different co-streamers and stuff. The negativity's still there, um, but I do feel like if there's one thing that's changed, it's the influence of Riot content has dropped. Because Riot content was never really negative. No. Um, and I, I, I would almost say in some regards, part of this issue has been exacerbated by the lack of, like, engagement on some LCS content. Like, I, I don't, I, I would have to check, but, like, I don't think things are as big as they used to be. And, so and, it might be, like, know. less people, so in the past, people would go watch the dive or this or that or the 
main LCS or PTL stream, or PTL. Uh, and or there would be the, the world's top 20 list, and yeah, there would yeah. be a lot more, I feel like, hype around the LCS-related products, or even the the, the Riot-related products. Not and instead... The Dive for you still gets hype. And some of the metrics are still fine, I should say, even on their individual YouTube channels. But in terms of Reddit engagement, where I think a lot of people's general perception comes from, these things do not get the traction they used to get. Even if like viewership is still fine on, on a lot of these these episodes and stuff or maybe it's down I mean, still, I think but it's at down, the very least but... it doesn't it doesn't dominate the conversation the way it used to be the the main piece of conversation now it's yeah. ls's tier list and cajal's tier list and what did ls or what did cajal say about dom's tier list <laughs> you know like it, it's driven a lot more by community figures now than it was in ye old days especially and so now instead of consuming a lot of stuff that's like oh hey like this is yeah, you know, this player's had a rough split. Oh, I'm you hate to hyped see for it. this matchup because this guy played this guy two years ago and they have this story. And, yet, and that's a lot how Riot talks about things. Content creators go, well, that team's fucked. They have no chance against this team. I don't care about the storylines. They're goddamn trash. This yeah, team's going to win guys might turn off, My guys might turn off the stream because who wants to watch Gold of Guardians of Mortals? Um. <laughs> I'm not even talking about LCS. I'm saying even for Worlds, you know, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I feel like there, there's not much of a focus on the narrative elements... In, yeah. in the analysis driven content creator world. Okay, so let me let me play the devil's advocate here, Mark. Fans will say, yeah, but they're speaking the truth, right? Like you guys was used to force these fake narratives uh and hype up these teams that are actually shitters. And like I love watching them because they don't hold back. It's hashtag unfiltered and they're they're speaking the truth. Um okay. Is it the truth whenever they're predicting NA to go completely winless at Worlds and then the broadcast and many of the points brought up by the LCS analyst are right? To LS's credit, he he's one and one on predicting a team to go zero and six and being right about it. Okay, last year at Worlds, he predicted TSM to go zero six. People were in an uproar and then they went zero six. Obviously, that did not work with TL. And uh, I think Steve in my interview said, fuck LS. Uh, but... <laughs> but I mean, so so Papa raises a good point in Twitch where he says the role of Riot broadcast built national rivalry. The role of the co-stream is to build up the co-streamer's persona, and I think you know, like that's hundred percent what LS and everyone else is doing. And I don't fault them. I, I want to be clear when I say this negativity has always been around, and it's not on them. I, I just what I mean is like that Riot angle has not gotten the traction it has in the past for whatever reason, you know, or there's less of an emphasis on it. Um, and so, like, I think a lot of a lot. A non-negligible portion of the vocal fan base is is more in line of following those conversations than they were in the past. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't. I don't really fault LS for he, being the NA doubter and the LCK fanboy. Like that's his persona, and he you know believes it on some level, and he's going to make spicy predictions to to make spicy predictions and stuff. And I don't think he's saying anything he doesn't believe. I don't want to make it sound like he's just making shit up. No more than I think people should think that the broadcast is making shit up because we spend more of our talking time about historical data points and like, hey, these guys met four times. And like, he got the better of them in these three matchups. And, you know, like, I think that's just the angles that everyone plays. So my point with all this is like, I don't fucking know. <laughs> I don't really want to blame the co-streamers necessarily um, when there's more things going on than just like co-streamers came out of nowhere and they hate everything. Yeah, to be clear, I'm not, as I said, I'm not blaming somebody like LS. You're, who you're an LS hater, role well. Dave. Uh, uh, I, it's it's going to be labeled that way. I went into that on a well, TikTok uh, two days ago, and somebody's like, that's an L point. And I was like, okay, well, fair. You know, debate me. Why is it an L take? And they're like, because LS daddy. And I was like, okay, well, yeah. you know, moving on from this. You did have a number of interactions on your uh, posts in, in Discord. One part I liked, and I, I might have missed it when I was getting my allergy medicine. You, you said that they also, co-streamers also contribute to a lot of the social engagements that players get now, positively as well, I believe, was was the angle that you are talking about, the growth that yeah. they might see. So I actually just wrapped up the so LCS social media analytics for post-Worlds as like the final conclusion before we jump in the next year. And there is a direct one-to-one -one comparison of players that are in the favor of co-streamers, aka obviously Fudge, uh, and a few other big names like that, that it saw noticeable gaps between them and everybody else in terms of social media following a uh, gain from the beginning of the year to the end. So there is definitely a role where co-streamers 
are positively impacting player social medias and developing them beyond what the players can clearly do themselves. Or maybe that even Ryan could do through content there. I'm not sure why there's this fall off, but there is a clear one-to-one ratio there. Trindamir dropping a sub in the chat right now. Mark Merrill tuning in for our co-streaming conversation. Here's your moment, (laughs) Dave. If you want to say something to the the founder of Riot Games around co-streaming, I'm sure he's heavily involved in the day-to-day decision-making around co-streaming opportunities. Uh, He's he's watching the show right now. Uh, Congrats on Arcane, by the way, Mark. I'm glad to uh, to see all the cool stuff you guys. Thanks. Yeah, not you, the other Mark. uh um <laughs> yeah sorry not to derail the, the premiere. conversation yes no you're good see, see um, you at the premiere yeah um uh I, I do think the king making point's a good one because there was like when fbi was popping off last year on golden guardians dash and i went to his twitter and i think he had like maybe a hundred or a couple thousand but like not many and you know we just spam tweeted how come the best ad carry in the lcs is under like i forget what it was x amount of, of people and we just spam tweeted that and like we saw his thing shoot up and I feel like any any time there's a playoff series where like a, a player pops off, it doesn't have that much social interaction. I always try and try and hype them up, and I, it does work. And I think you know to that to their credit, co streamers deserve a lot of credit for driving conversation. Like Jazuke as an example, even an established player, um, he was getting shit on a fair amount for his co stream being like, "How can anyone watch this? It's insane!" You know, like he's this this nutcase. Like it's the most entertaining thing possible. And then when he starts doing well, they continue that narrative. But now it's in a positive way. Like, oh my god, you have to watch Jazuke's co stream. So I, I do think um, there is not just Jazuke's co stream. said about the force uh, for good. Pro view. Oh, excuse me. His his pro view. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jazuke was the only evil geniuses player to gain a social media following from the beginning of the year to the end with the exception of Danny. But obviously I didn't track his stats at the beginning because that wasn't known. Yeah. And as a new player, it's a little bit more obvious that that's going to happen. Yep. Well, Dave, thank you so much for the call. I hope the TikTok content is going well for you, the esports content. Uh, Anything you want to shout out before we take a quick break? Uh, I would like to shout out the, the LCS organizations of TSM, 100 Thieves, Cloud9, and who was the other one? Uh, Team Liquid for all having very good TikTok presences. Uh, They don't post enough League of Legends content. Nobody does. But somehow, I have a bigger following than five of the organizations. So please, LCS teams, that is a way to get a direct access to a younger audience that you can get into League of Legends. It's not hard to do. Two videos a day. You can pop them out in a minute and a half. Just upload TikTok content and try and grow League of Legends in North America, especially go into our biggest year next year with Worlds in NA. You know what? That's a good fucking shout out, Travis. All right, fine. We'll give him game field caller, victory caller of the night, just so that uh, for the shout out. Uh, Last night, by the way, uh, there were seven people all sitting around the table and one person and Mark had no idea what was happening when all of us all at once together said, oh, no, our table, it's broken. Uh, I, all, so, all, in synch- all synch- in synchronous, and Mark was confused as fuck. He's like, I am clearly not. And that's because Mark does not. Mark only, he refuses to make his own TikTok and, and only consumes through his girlfriend. Well, so what bothered me was Ashley was one of the people who shouted it out. She knew the reference. Everyone knew the reference. And she usually has me in the loop. And I don't know what how this one fell through the gap, but I felt I felt like a big boomer when everyone yelled it. Um, but no, TikTok's a shit, and I, I think to the caller's point, it's what the youth are using. That's <laughs> what why the youth. Oh, don't say that ever again. It's what the youth are using. Oh my god, you made me sound so. I feel so old having heard you say that. We're trying to start a Genshin content. You can't be sitting around being like. It's what the, the youth are using. The youth just love their waifus. Let me tell you. Oh my god. <laughs> I've never felt more old than in this moment. Uh, I just I sent you a message on how you can get our the free case of Mountain Dew game feel sent to you, Dave. Thanks so much for the the call, and we'll catch you next time. Thank you so much for having me on. Yeah, have a good one. Okay, uh, how's it going? I see. So Mark Merrill's still hanging out in the chat. He was saying hi to to Mark Zimmerman a second ago. He's hanging out. He's chilling. Uh, it's actually crazy how much stuff that they're doing around Arcane right now. It must be really cool uh, for for Mark to see this. Actually, Mark Merrill, please tell somebody 
I, I'd love to interview you or somebody associated with the project because here's what I will say while Mark is getting the next caller. I think what is fascinating is that there is very clearly a huge mentality shift in Riot that has occurred over the past couple of years because previously I think you guys would have never done the stuff that you do are doing on Arcane because you would have perhaps felt, my, my impression is you would have thought it does not feel authentic to go out and partner with all these different places to do something with, well, Reddit, I think feels very authentic, but like have the collab with Fortnite, have all these arcane things all over the place, et cetera, et cetera. And I really do feel like my suspicion is Epic and all the crazy stuff that they have been able to do with Fortnite was a situation where it kind of proved out to, to Riot and probably other companies as well. Like, Hey, you can do a lot of really cool mainstream collabs and have it still feel authentic. Uh, he said, no, nah, we just need time to establish ourselves. Uh, well, okay. Well, there goes my theory. Jin is here. Jin, where are you calling from? <laughs> uh, I'm calling from Montreal, Canada. Montreal, Canada. What do you want to talk about on the show? Uh, I My take was that I think an NA versus EU tournament post-season turn or post-split tournament uh, would is better for the, the Western audience in terms of engagement than Worlds or MSI. Um, with the caveat that NA and EU still perform as they do now, as in like uh, we're still we're still uh, somewhat on equal footing, at least according to this year's worlds, and below uh, Korea and China. Yeah, yeah, okay. So if we're not competitive, then it's better to focus on an area where we where we are competitive than than to do the world. And you're not, but to be clear, you're not saying get rid of worlds in MSI. You're just saying do no, this no, as no, well. No. Because this will actually be get more engagement and have people more interested than like watching our teams get smacked in the face well, by LCK. And and to be clear as well, like were you around for the Rift Rivals times or Battle of the, of the yeah. Atlantic? Yeah. So 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 when I originally posted it in, in Club Topics, I was joking that it's time for the yearly Rift Rivals stick. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of. I guess my idea is that that we should have a more elaborate Rift Rivals like top three NA, top three EU have a double Elam tournament um, before Worlds or MSI. Um, You're this... saying before Worlds in it or MSI? Yeah. I, so I would even say like lock-in tournament. I mean, EU schedule is different than ours. I, I think it'd be cool if we sync them up and could do a lock-in tournament. Um, though I understand that might be, you know, logistically a massive upgrade to what lock-in is right now, which is just any teams competing in the LCS studio. Now you'd have to actually house the EU teams for a long period of time or the NA teams for an extended period of time. But we just, we would always um, have to host it in Europe because the Europeans can't ever get the visa stuff sorted. And so that's how you do lock in and all the players can compete together is the European <laughs> players could actually compete in the LEC studio. It's a European anyways. Perfect. Yeah, it's like, we can't bring instead, instead of bringing uh, the players to North America, we'll bring North America to them for our, our revived battle of the atlantic in january yeah and and i would say as well and this was something i saw on reddit that made me want to make this or grab this topic was this year north america and europe played a whopping seven best of ones against each other throughout the entire year no best of fives um that feels pretty fucking bad for what is the second biggest regional rivalry in all lowly sports Arguably, Certainly I mean, the talk about... most relevant to the English audience. It, yeah, clearly the most relevant to the audiences that, that care about those regions. Um, but like LCK, LPL, you can argue is bigger because uh, it's like a wrestle for who's the best region in the world. And there's probably some some minor emerging regions that have some rivalries. I know that, that some of them always scrap. Yeah. But at least I feel like EU and NA, by sharing a fan base to, to some degree and sharing Reddit and sharing forum spaces and Twitter spheres, they fight. And like the fact that you could have an opportunity like this is a year where like North America might have been better than Europe. We don't really know, but like it was close. Might have been us. I would have fucking loved to have had like a tournament dedicated to it. You know, like yeah. it was better. And I feel like that's a, that's something I, I am really missing. And Rift Rivals was always in a weird spot. Kind of hated its location. But let's be fucking honest. Do, is the first half of spring any more compelling <laughs> than than a, a interregional tournament between North America and Europe would be like no, no fucking way not the even fucking close so. yeah like lock in tournament like just fucking slam that shit in there just clap 
spring together. Let's let's simpl- simplify it and like you know, let's have some fun. Yeah, I I am. There's a press conference on Wednesday of this week, and I definitely intend to ask or intend to ask uh, the the Lolly Sports leadership about the format stuff because there's been so much conversation about it this time around and. That point, I, that Reddit thread, I saw it as well, and I was like, that is crazy. Like, we can't get a single best of five between NA and EU in a year. Um, yeah. We have seven best of ones. You know, like, this is, I think so many people care about these these rivalries. I mean, Twitch chat just it takes it over anytime. It LCS game will happen, and you just see people on the chat doing, like, the... Uh, EU this, NA that, blah, 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 blah. You know, all the copy pasta. I'm from NA. I like cheeseburgers. Yeah, yeah. Whatever the fuck that one is. Yes. The cheeseburger one is my favorite. My favorite is the one where it's the out of breath cheeseburger. They're memeing the NA copy paster by uh, making the NA copy paste out of breath. Uh, <laughs> e- EU is, oh, uh, uh, NA, blah. oh, all right. Just hand me another cheeseburger. That's the best copy pasta I've ever seen in Twitch. <laughs> the entire time I've been on Twitch, like it is so good, um, and it's like one that shits on an A, but it's like teeth, yeah, it, yeah, it's so fun, it's so fun, um, and it doesn't have to be an NA, just NA EU too. Like there could be a like Rift Rivals was, there could be a Korea versus China tournament going on. I mean, on. yeah, at this point in time, we'd just That's be well. resurrecting Rift Rivals, right? Like, right, but, but Rift Rivals, the the format for Rift Rivals was always fairly awful i mean it was bad like, you're you're splitting you're in like the middle of summer split you're flying over these teams well, they don't care even if you put rift rivals as a tournament in a better place it was always done a little weirdly some of them were okay yeah but you know it'd be like these three teams play these three teams and like this weird like you challenge this team and that team challenges that team like if we were going to do it right in a lot of fans minds i think it would just be an actual tournament normal you know. Well, you can do it completely normal because you'd have to have you. You couldn't have NA play NA and EU play EU. As I, I think I, you could, like if you, you let's you, say, you could, yeah. Oh, let's you want to slam logis- them all in there, like a big group I'm, stage. I'm saying throw out logistics for a moment, and, yeah. and lock-in tournament becomes a month-long tournament with NA and EU teams interspersed into. You have 20 teams, right? Like two groups of 10, four groups of five. I don't fucking know. Come up with whatever you want, but then you know you're mixing it up a fair amount. It doesn't even have to be that big. Like when I was. Uh, when I first came in, I said top three from each region, right? So, like, if, if you... And then let the other ones do their own regional lock-in tournament. Who, who don't right. that. So, so that way, at so, least everyone's so, getting practice. Right, and you make a double elim. You have uh, first seed EU on one side of the bracket, first seed NA on the other side, and then second seeds go against those each other's first seeds. And then the third seeds and the losers, like, start off in the losers bracket, and you just move up from there. I'm yeah. creating a poll. Uh to see if people would trade MSI for a regional a region. Oh, you're saying you're saying kill MSI? There's some some I, people I, in I, chat I, are talking about that now. Would you trade MSI I for a region rival MSI. tournament? No, there's there's not enough international competition. I wouldn't want to trade an international one for a just now, now you're influencing it. I would say yes, no, I'll trade I'm it. Not influencing way. it. People are people were saying no before I these words left. I my put mouth. the I put the poll up. Dane, this was Dane in suggestion in the chat. The poll's in Twitch chat now. You've you have you have sullied this this survey, Mark. All right. Now we don't no, know. It would have been overwhelmingly already... yes, and then you came out and shit on it, and now we don't know. I don't think I have that much power. We'll never know. The results of this test of the survey completely non-binding. Okay. I'm just saying that the lock-in tournament and the condensed spring season sold me enough on that idea that you say okay bring tournament of some kind that's now looping in a couple european teams i know dana said logistically this would never happen i agree you would never put 10 european teams in na for a random tournament at the start of spring i know they wouldn't do that but i was just saying logistically in, in my perfect mind if you threw logistics out but realistically for the caller's point top three teams and you do this kind of double seated bracket Losers already have the top three. And yeah, it's going to be a mess. The teams from that were the top three from last year might have roster swaps and they're not going to like necessarily be indicative. You could do a fan vote for a while. That's how uh, fucking All Stars All Stars All Stars worked. Was yeah, you just voted the people you want. Like, yeah, fuck it. I know G2 and Fnatic are going to win. Whatever. Send them. TSMC are going to win. Whatever. It's a fun yeah, tournament. That, that's why 
that's why I liked the idea of having this tournament between worlds and regional playoff or MSI and regional playoffs because then you already have everything seated already. But I guess the, the it, thing that it sort of causes burnout with players and burnout and competitive integrity concerns. I think a lot of people would rather be prepping for worlds than worrying about some show tournament. So I, I don't think realistically yeah. that would work. I, I think you have to either do it before honest. or in the middle or at the end of the season, I think. Yeah. And if you do it in the middle, think... you probably have to replace MSI, which, you know, we don't know. That could be what most people want. Uh, it's unclear at this time. 82% I mean, I would... do not want that. Oh, it's uh, that was you, you, you <laughs> told all those people to do it. People on the Twitch chat said, we have our own minds. Yeah, right. You guys just show up and repeat all the same shit you've heard on co-streams, okay? You have you do not have your own minds. Uh, all right, Jin. I, I, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, no, I, I was just going to say I would have preferred, like, you shorten shorn, shorn the uh, spring split to make room for, like, a tournament, and then that would be played on one patch, and then so then you wouldn't have to worry about competitive integrity because MSI or Worlds would be on another patch. No, I think it's more about time spent yeah, doing nobody, this instead of prepping. You just qualify for Worlds. Trip. Nobody wants to go compete in a for fun tournament uh, against you. Yeah, most most tournament. teams, as soon as they make Worlds, will start booking their boot camp and like heading over to the scrim. Even if there's a month and a half break, most of them go over right away, either to Korea or to where the tournament is taking place. Um, so I don't think anyone would want to then spend another week or two figuring this tournament out. Yeah. Jin, thank you yeah, so much fair. for the call. Anything you want to shout out before we take a quick break? Uh, not the usual stuff. Shout out to all the sponsors. Um, looking forward to whatever, whether you do a arcane um, co stream or not. Not Mark and I won't be doing an arcane co stream because we're actually going to be at the premiere, which I, I have the my invite right here actually. Um, well, I mean, there's also episode two and three, right? Uh, yes, but I think. Wait, I think you can only co-stream the first episode. Uh, I think two and three were available as well. Are they? From what I read. Uh, maybe. Uh, uh, I maybe they expanded it. I'm looking at the article right now. Uh, we, while Riot will be de debuting the episode on Twitch itself, any fan content creator or influencer wishing to co-stream the first episode of Arcane has permission. You just got crushed, Jin. What do you have to say to that? Uh, I'll have to relook at the page, I guess. No, well, anyway, I'm just teasing. Um, but, uh, no, here's what I will say. If you are, if you are looking for Mark and I do that content, I think I've convinced Mark that after every, cause, cause I think they're dropping them over time. So after is my understanding. So anyway, we're going to be sporadically doing, uh, recap or not recaps but like uh, opinion pieces on like what we thought of each each of them so that'll maybe we'll stream those discussions or whatever it'll be similar to when we do our book talks on the book channel so yeah you can stay tuned for right. that thanks for having me jen thanks so much for the call really appreciate it and we'll catch you next time all right we're going to take a quick break to talk about game fuel hello everyone might i offer you some game fuel. I did. I had a very beautiful post on my Twitter last night. I uh, I went and got an orange game fuel. I stuck it between two candles and two pumpkins, and it was a fantastic little Halloween post. I'm still very proud of it. That's. It has nothing to do with the sponsor segment that I'm doing right now. I just still am proud of how that turned out. So go check it. Go check it out on my Twitter. And engage with the tweet. Um. Anyway, you can go to gamefuel.com/travis. And you co use code Travis to try some game fuel yourself all year long. People have been messaging me. They're trying it for the first time and they're falling in love with it. All right. Uh, I mean, I don't know if I can say that it's r like not romantic love or something. I don't, there's no, I can't prove that. All right. And I'm not trying to say it as a, something I can prove, but people love it. And you can get some really cool stuff right now. If you sign up for, for free, the Game Fuel Victory Pass, which gives you rewards whenever you purchase cases on their website, uh, including additional discount codes, uh, background socks. You can get socks. That is actually one of the, I, that's my favorite thing that I've seen on this so far. Fanny pack, accent strips, LED stuff, uh, t-shirts, uh, Game Fuel controller skins. There's all sorts of cool stuff over there. So when you do, do me a favor, when you do sign up, uh, or when you do go to gamefield.com slash Travis and you use code Travis at checkout, make sure you are also 
leveling up your victory pass because uh, this thing lasts for six months, so you have a while to uh, to get this thing going. And uh, we appreciate all the support that all of you give us uh, with the Game Fuel purchases. Uh, so thank you so much to Mountain Dew Game Fuel for sponsoring the show. Uh, check the link in the description if you're watching on YouTube uh, to get access to delicious Game Fuel products. Uh, there's you know, We're all going to do, be doing a lot of gaming as we get into the um, off season in the winter. So make sure that you have the feel that you need to game. Mark, you ready Hello. for the, the yeah. last caller? Should I go get them? Yeah, I'm down. Uh, 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 C says Caroline, thank you for the 19 months and congratulations on affiliate. Sandy Toes, thank you for the 19 months. Uh, Trendemir, thank you for the 16. Sauce Boss 503, Omega Diamond Zinc, Trev 1657, Zemelkai as well. And then Matt Mendo, thank you for the 100 bits. Mark is grabbing our last caller of the night. Uh, 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 where are we? Where are we? I know you guys want the show to go on forever. We've been going on for two hours. Um, let me, uh, let me, I know some, some people want to use the Amazon link, so you guys can do that. I'll put that in chat. Uh, Mark still, still on the, on the way to get our last caller. So I'm just filling time so that there's not dead space in the audio. Okay, Hello. here we go. Jiro is here. Jiro, where are you calling from? Hey, I'm calling from Cranston, Rhode Island. Rhode Island. What do you want to talk about in the show? Uh, my take was about, um, the C9 rumors I've been seeing floating around on Twitter and, um, Reddit about how there's a possibility of Blabber and Fudge being sold as a package deal, and if it's true, uh, this will be the single worst off-season move that Jack has ever made. Maybe the worst off-season move uh, that's happened ever in North America. So, so can I ask? So you saw this on Twitter and Reddit? Yeah, uh, I don't have exact links. I was looking for them near the whole like whole time. Uh, but I so mean, I will like say I per, I put this in my predictions, and I would if I could go back and stop myself from putting it in the prediction, I would. Uh, okay. I am. I am now based off of more recent rumors. I think I am more worried about uh, Vulcan than I am about about Blabber and uh, Fudge leaving. But okay. what what would you say? What would you say about Vulcan leaving, Jiro? Um, I think that's another terrible move that Jack could make. There's <laughs> what are okay. What is the move? What what are the moves? Like you, so you okay. want Vulcan Spilling perks? Perks and Sven right. are the only options, I'm, right? For you, I'm gonna to I'm gonna admit. I'm a little bit of a perks hater after this year. Um, I feel for the amount of money that Cloud9 has spent into him, the results that we got back were just not even satisfactory. Um, like, sure, quarters is fine, but a lot of the games at Worlds that we saw out of perks, uh, there was a lot of int going on, a lot of throws, EU Sleeper Agent. I mean, we saw the LeBlanc W back in the tiebreaker versus Rogue. Um, Sven, too, he didn't kind of choked hard at Worlds. Um, the reason why I was saying Vlaber and Fudge being sold could be horrible is because they were just honestly C9's best performing players over the year, and I don't think that there um, are any better domestic players that could replace them. Um, and if you were going to import to replace them, who are any better residents that you could get to fill in mid or ADC or support, you know? Mid or, sorry, who are the better options for mid or yeah, ADC yeah. support? Yeah, yeah, so... So, you know how I was saying, like, Blabber and Fudge being sold could be horrible. Uh, yeah. I don't think there's any um, residents to replace them that could be any better than them or equal to them. And then that would mean that you would have to import, probably. But if you import, you need to go ahead and get residents for um, mid or, or ADC or support. And I don't think that there's really any good um, residents that you okay, can so, get Okay, so no, not, not leak, not leak, but let's let's come up with a, an idea here, right? Like, what if... Uh, Bjergsen goes to TL, but Jensen didn't work out in the ADC thing. What would you think okay. about? Well, actually, yeah, Jensen no, was... was very unlikely to go back to C9, I think, because of of the circumstances of his departure. But hmm. uh, would that would that be a scenario for you? I mean, there are players oh, here, hell yeah, right, dude? Jensen's a Smurf on the world stage. I mean, we saw him this year pulling out so many clutch moments. I would love to have Jensen back on C9, um, but I just like you said, I don't think it's very likely. Um, I'm kind of hoping that like maybe a Danny buyout happens or something because that guy is killing it. But um, I don't know. I just I don't really know who else could live up to I guess Cloud Nine standards that a resident that could take up the uh, the mantle. Um. So so I mean I, there, there's there's a part to your take I agree with that there's not 
incredible residents that you could get in top lane, especially. I mean, Licorice was kind of the top lane one, and they already made the decision to go with yeah, Fudge instead of him. Food. Yeah. Well, I don't know about well, I, I, well, you know what I mean. Like, it, it, they couldn't get him back. I don't think now. Yeah, and I don't think they'd really want to either. I think they they made their decision for re for for reasons. Um, yeah, and then so like I the think only. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm just saying. I largely agree with you. I think Jungle is one where you know you could talk about Spica. Maybe you know Travis is talking about these changes happening. Maybe there's a world where they think they can make a bid for Spica if T A T S M wants to go even harder on their development angle. Even though I know Reggie said that he's playing for them. Um, who knows? Uh, but at at the very least, Jungle does feel like it has a lot of. Um, yeah. domestic players like Santorin and even uh, Sven Skarin and, and some of these players are, are all now and uh, domestic players. So I, I think that there are some angles they could go for, but uh, the one thing I agree with with Dan and saying in chat was that the, these players are also an all-time high now. So if Jack is just trying to do a flip, which he does, he's done them before, this is a good time to make that flip happen because maybe uh, Blabber trends downwards. You know, like he, he had a struggle a bit at the end of last year was pretty good again this year, but then also had some moments where he was struggling. Maybe you're like, all right, I'm, I'm going to offload him before he slumps. And, and Fudge is on an upward trajectory. People think he's the best NA top, like you just said. Like, hey, that's a great time to make some money. You know, <laughs> like uh, there's a possibility. That he's got to recover from his force. his perks. Yeah, but it's like oh, debts. <laughs> Carlos is going to send the debt collectors after him soon. So this is how this is how he deals with all that stuff. Yeah, you know, for for, for Jack, you're, you're wondering where are the upgrades. Jack doesn't give a fuck about upgrades. He's like, where? How do I get out of the red? Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's like, I got these debt collectors calling me every day. You know, I thought uh, I thought we were going to win worlds when we acquired perks. We used some of that that world's pools pool money. What um, do you want more, uh, fudge or my liver? I think I'll take my liver. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Um, he sold a Valorant player probably for a great deal of money this year, so perhaps he's fine. Um, okay, it is a very good. I I know I do like the call because it it, it does force the conversation of like, all right, who could C nine get? Uh, and you seem to think that there are easier options to pick up in um the the mid. Play, like it's, it's better to keep these these are the best residents you can get in these options in these roles and then you go fill ad and mid what's very funny about this is that ad has historically been a role that doesn't get imported like sven is a outlier because normally it's either top jungle or mid that is getting imported most often i think uh in north right. america so it's it's interesting to me that from your perspective you're like no no, no. go import ad don't you know, well, and, I have, keep if, if I can add rhythm. real quick, I do have a very big name I'd like to talk about for ADC. Um, I, I don't want to get like too far down the rabbit hole, but sure. I think uh, importing someone like Viper could be really good. He's a free agent at the end of this year. And I remember watching an Ashley you don't have to import Viper. a while back. Sorry? You don't have to yeah, import yeah. Viper. No, no, no. Shut Viper up. has an ADC. Oh, yeah, I, he I knows what you about. mean. He's he's being a loser. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I get it now. Sorry, but yeah, I remember an Ashley King interview years back. Viper spe speaks near perfect English. He has like no accent at all. He he can articulate very well. Uh, it's very impressive, honestly. And like I just said, he's a free agent at the end of this year. So Jack could go ahead and make like a big offer for him or something if he wanted to import. Yeah, Chovy Viper sounds really good. Those Griffin Chovy guys Viper, are pretty dude. decent. Yeah, and a and a Griffin. Uh, Scaff in chat says Kenvy and Tenacity could replace Blabber and Fudge. Yeah, but they're like real. I mean, all right, they look awesome in Academy, right? But it's like they're not part of the C9 system. So it's like, what the, does Jack or anyone else in C9 really know about them? I guess I don't know how to explain it. My my reasoning on that. I would. We, like we do have to get you out of the call soon because your your mic's been popping this whole time. It's very painful. I'm uh, sorry. Let me mute when I'm not talking. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I know what you're saying about they're not, them not being in the C9 system. I feel like C9 doesn't usually reach for prospects, it feels like. like they, they just have them all. Like, they'll reach yeah. and then run a year with them in Academy. Um, so the fact that they don't have any internal data on them does make me feel like it's less likely that they promote them. Um, I mean, that's the biggest reason, like, the br biggest argument for why I think they could keep Fudge and Blabber as opposed to flipping them like they normally do is because there's not necessarily immediate replacements. Yeah, so I'm I'm definitely on the probably not going to happen train. Um, 
I feel like, you know, let's get Han Sama and Niski back in here. How about that? That sounds good. Let's get, I don't know, Humanoid in. Yeah. Let's get, let's get Larson in. Let's just, let's just, let's just pilfer Europe again. Yeah. It's that meme that I put with the cat fishing out of the, uh, the LEC thing. Uh, 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 Hansama, I feel like is a, I, he, he seems like a very likely option for, for, for TL or sorry, for, sorry, not for TL for C9. That is where I would be, uh, that is where I would be betting some chips right now if I had to. Could you see C9 humanoid happen? Maybe, maybe, uh, humanoid, I feel like has been, there's been a bunch of stuff. Also Larson, maybe. Maybe. Travis, Han Sama is under contract until 2022. Don't you know how contracts work? No. Can you explain this to me, Mark? Well, once you sign on paper, there's literally nothing you can do to undo that. Even I, if I don't it understand. says in the contract there's a way out, there never is. I don't understand. Seems seems unlikely to me. Um, all right. Well, that might be... I. I I do kind of agree with you, caller. The Vulcan thing I think is very interesting. I wonder if they'll import support. If they import a bot lane. I just what's, don't know what you do mid lane then. What's the rub on, on the Vulker? On the Vulcan? Why do, why do they why why do they hate him now if you had to guess? I have no idea. And I'm not gonna speculate. And I'm not saying they hate him. I'm not even just to be clear, Mark just baited <laughs> me into implying that they hate him. <laughs> I am not implying they hate him, by the way. I don't know. I just, I, I need to be very careful on that. Um, but I, what do you, what, hang on, caller, what do you think about Mickey? Um, I think Mickey, he would probably actually be a very good replacement for Vulcan, but it's, it gets back to the thing where like, okay, mid or ADC, which one do you choose not to import? And then when you choose not to import for there, who do you replace with, you know? So, um, I, I mean, I feel Vulcan at his peak can compare really well to Mickey. Um, I, I don't, I wouldn't be opposed to it, but I just don't know what else you could do. I'll leave it at that. Yeah. All right. Well, Mark just, uh, fucked up his camera. Oh, shit. <laughs> Jiro, thanks so much for the call. Anything you want to shout out? Uh, yeah. Um, I want to shout out Alienware, uh, Mountain Dew Game Fuel. I shouted them out last time I was on. Uh, it's the Charged Cherry Burst, I believe it's called. My favorite yes. one. Yes. Um, I, uh, I recently got a kitten. She's awesome. Her name's Soul. I want to shout her out. I love her to death. That's great. And, uh, my love last shout out is Nick Anero Smith because the other night when on Twitter, he was tweeting out everybody eats good. Uh, he bought me chicken nuggets from Burger King. So thank you, uh, Nick Anero Smith. Uh, very good. Thank you so much, uh, Jiro, for the call, and we'll catch you next time. Have a great night. Okay, so uh, I'm sending a feed. And Arrow, when are you going to send me chicken nuggets? Huh? Huh? Where are my nuggies? Oh, no. Your feed is still broken, Mark. It's sending a very No, no, signal. no. It's setting a, 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 just a monitor, a very in-focused edge of a monitor. <laughs> it went the wrong way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there he is. Ooh, look at that little boy. Hold. He's got his arm over his eyes. He's too bright in here. Hey, Mark, should we talk about World Finals? Should we? So, did, okay, let me ask you. Did anybody submit? Because people will scream at us if we... But, like, did anybody submit takes for World Finals? Uh, I don't think that there are any actual world finals takes. I think that the, I, th I might have glossed over one or two that were like more meta talking about the world finals, you know, like from a format perspective about like, oh, well, semis is better again and like stuff like that, you know, but I, I don't think I saw one that was like, I actually think EDG is going to upset, you know, like if I, if I had seen that, I would have pulled it. I did not see it. Do you think it's bad that we don't get any world finals calls for the show that happens right before world finals. What should we have done? No, no, no. I'm not saying for us. I'm just saying, is it like a bad thing that, Oh, like people are so checked out or, or, or distracted by off season or something like that, that like people are just like less interested in finals. I do think it feels weird. 
Like, I just can't imagine. And maybe we're wrong. You know, like, maybe we're on the jaded side of the Lily Sports spectrum. And, like, all the, the young whippersnappers are like, can't fucking wait for finals. Maybe, maybe I'm just not seeing it. But it would be weird to, like, go into the Super Bowl and be like, yeah. Kind of, kind of over. I put up a poll in the chat. Are you excited for finals? Yes or no? Uh, we'll see where it comes in. Right let now, me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me really this, Travis. What was, what just happened? Are you okay? <laughs> um, one thing I was just thinking about was the Super Bowl has conferences, and a lot of traditional sports have conferences. And what it means is you actually don't get to see the overlap between regions happen, and so you have a harder time predicting what's going to go down because the semifinalists from one group did not necessarily play against the semifinalists in another group. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So EDG SKT would never T1. in traditional sports T1. God damn it. EDG T1 would never have fought earlier in playoffs in another traditional sport and then go in, into other parts of a tournament. Whereas that happens here. And it lets you know that EDG is weaker than SKT and then SKT T1. lost to the team T1. to T1. T1 <laughs> lost to down one. And so you have a very easy prediction of, well, then the weaker team then loses again. Um, I wonder, maybe the way to solve worlds is to break it up even more. And you don't let teams cross-pollinate. So that way, when the finals happens, you actually have no fucking clue. Think about that. <clears throat> uh, are you excited for finals? 54% say no. 46% say yes. Right. 50 50. So, Not great. I, I mean, right. You, you think that should be 100% yes. Well, or like 70 or 80 at the worst. Right. At least, a, at least a major, not just a more the, in the, the favor, majority. The like majority of people in the chat of hardcore League of Legends fans, 2,000 people watching right now, and the majority of people who voted in this poll said no. Yeah. Uh, it's not good. Even if that was 54% yes, that's still not really good. Whereas if you ask, maybe if you ask hardcore football fans, are you excited for the Super Bowl? I, I still feel like they'd say yes no matter what. You know? Yeah. Who's who's not excited for the culmination of their... Are you excited for the NBA Finals? The people, I think, who aren't excited are usually just the salty fans that are, like, pissed that, like, their yeah, team, that their team got knocked out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Which that's maybe why that's what we all are in the West. <laughs> like we're oh, just all... man, have you cracked the code? You know what? To some degree, you're probably right. Like I, yeah. I don't think Korean fans would be 54 percent not enthused to watch Dom Won win again. Yeah. Mister Epics says something that uh, really, instead of his name being Mister Epics, it should be Captain Obvious. Says you are taking into account an NA and EU audience. The Korean and Chinese fan bases that are much bigger than NA and EU are excited for finals. Yes, but honestly, it feels like you know, you, ideally. You would want a lot of people from all over the world to watch this. Um, yeah, I mean, we were, we were memeing about take the Super Bowl, for example. Like, oh, well, the Patriots fans aren't excited because they just lost or something. But the reality is the majority of, of, of football fans are excited for the Super Bowl. Yeah. Even if you include a, a biased sample size, it's still not going to be 54% not excited, I bet. But it's I like, feel like that is low. But it's like half. I mean, this is what's funny is like. Half I want to go. I I'm excited for for finals, especially when I can go in person. It's tough whenever I'm like not not there in person, but and you have to um, wake up at five a.m. to watch it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, it's it's a very interesting thing where I, as somebody who's covering this, fifty percent of my audience. Let's just let's just assume that like my Twitch chat right now is indicative of my Your general YouTube. audience. It's like yeah. it ha like people are less excited for this than than most of the things I do throughout the year, probably. You know what I mean? If if you ask anyone, are you excited for the LCS final? You know, it's going to yeah. be higher than fifty four percent saying no. Yeah. So, there. I, to your point, like maybe you just should have made content around worlds, Travis. I mean, we've like that's almost what this this hotline league has become, and it, like, and that's it's sad to me. It is, that is sad to me, right? Because like, Worlds is hype, and it is the culmination of everything throughout the year. And I I want like to be spinning out all this content and for it to be this big thing or whatever. But it's like quarterfinals ends and NA is like, 
Perks is leaving? Bjergsen what? And it's like, it's it's just funny because then we, we're not really doing a lot of um, Worlds content. And, uh, yeah, and I mean, people in chat are like, oh, it's bias sample and stuff. Like, I, we, we understand that. I'm just saying, like, if you look at most traditional sports, if you pull, because you guys are, people who watch this are more on the hardcore fan side. You know, this is not like we're pulling the general LCS fan. These are LCS fans who then watch Travis content. It's very strange uh, to me, Mark, whenever we say things like, well, to be clear, like, this is a Western audience and, like, here are the factors. And then people on the chat are like, it's a, it's not a full sample size of all Worlds fans or all League of Legends fans. I'm like, yes, we were addressing this. Um, we still think it sounds low. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just not, it's not like people, people are like, yeah, this is your audience. I'm like, yes, that's what I'm talking about. I, as like a huge League of Legends esports content creator who invests in this and has to figure out his content plan for the year, my audience is like majority uninterested in world finals. That is like fascinating to me. Um, and I, I think is like a bit of a bummer and uh, it's weird. That's uh, unfortunate. Mark, ask how many people were excited to see the Pats in the Super Bowl when Brady was still there. Same thing here with LPL versus LCK. I think people were excited. Were they not? Were people not excited when Atlanta looked like they're going to beat them and then they came back or when Philly shit on them? And like, I bet Pats fans were excited to watch the Brady win the Super Bowl again. Like, I would have been excited to watch Faker win again. I'm excited that Khan is like, probably going to win his only world championship in the last year he gets to play his last game will cause him host hoisting the trophy you know like those are compelling storylines I, I don't know people just aren't excited <clears throat> travis for context it would have been 90 10 excitement for t1 versus dam one says papa smithy well then that indicates to me that there's a format issue um, yeah i mean that's what we're driving at with this more than anything because i don't think we're trying to criticize our, the fan base in case to be clear i think it's a symptom of a problem potentially. You guys are with fake fans, is what Mark Zimmerman is saying. Uh, <laughs> no, it, it's like this is yeah. We're not. It's not. It's not the best case scenario, I think. And there perhaps there are some adjustments or something that could be made. Okay, so uh, it's the end of the show. Uh, one, tune in tomorrow early afternoon Pacific time, probably around like twelve thirty or one. Uh, after I'm done recording Rift Reaction with Emily and Mark and I will be experimenting with some Genshin Impacto content. Uh, he's holding a game fuel and he's sticking it on top of the animal right now. Who, all right, great. Anyway. Game I, fuel uh, is the yeah. preferred beverage of cats. Yeah, well, we're going to have, uh, I won't hold that against game fuel. Uh, we're going to do some Genshin Impacto content. Should be fun. And uh, what else, Mark? Anything else? I'll probably do some more roster stuff throughout the week. Nah, the off season's hitting, so Travis and I are trying to do some other fun stuff that we're playing a lot of Genshin anyway. So yeah, I don't know what the overlap is with our fan base, but listen, based tuned. off the end of that poll just now, Mark and I have to flee. All right, we're trying to find <laughs> some place to go. <laughs> we tried books last year. Travis wasn't consistent enough. Yeah. We're trying Genshin. Maybe I've, can I figure Genshin. weebs. You know, I was there's a lot of weebs at League of Legends. Just go another place where there's a lot of weebs. Uh, and, uh, we're good. All right. Mark, anything you want to shout out? Nope. Everyone, this has been hot. Oh, stick around on stream. I'm going to do an unboxing and hang out and probably stream some Genshin. Uh, but this has been Hotline League episode 195. Thanks for watching. We stream every Monday, seven o'clock Pacific. You can catch us on Spotify, uh, and other, uh, podcast platforms, but we prefer Spotify and, uh, YouTube as well. Thanks everyone. We'll catch you next time.